Hello and welcome back. My name is Nico and in this video I show you how you can create a day to night hyperlapse with your drone. All we need for this effect is a drone which has the hyperlapse feature or at least the capability to save waypoints and shoot in an interval mode. So let's go outside and I show you how to do it. Start your drone and select the hyperlapse mode by pressing on the little icon over here. In the hyperlapse selection we are choosing the waypoint setting. Get the camera in the position you like. Then open the selector and press the little plus to set your first waypoint. The next step is to fly your drone to the second waypoint. In this case I chose two points. This means that the next point is where the hyperlapse should end. Make sure the camera is pointing at the same subject and that the path the drone will fly is free of obstacles. Then press the plus to set your second point. Now you can save this hyperlapse for later use, which we need because we have to fly the same hyperlapse at night time. Give the hyperlapse a name you will remember and write down the direction, the duration and the interval so you can set up your drone the same way every time for this hyperlapse. To load your hyperlapse from the library, you just have to press the node icon and choose the hyperlapse you have created. And there's currently a little bug in the app which turns your screen upside down if your screen rotation on your phone is turned off. You can fix it by leaving the camera view and open it up again. Now choose your direction, duration and interval based on your notes you have created for this hyperlapse. By pressing the record button, the drone flies to the first waypoint and starts the hyperlapse. The aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. If you already know where your first point is, you can try and fly as close as possible to this point. This is important at night time, I show you why later on. When the drone reaches the first point, it starts the hyperlapse automatically. This might be a problem, because if you did not set your settings right before pressing the record button, it's too late now. As you can see in this example, the exposure is set too high. In this case, stop the hyperlapse and correct those settings. Now, press the record button again. The aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. The drone realigns itself and starts a new hyperlapse. After finishing the flight, the drone generates a 4K hyperlapse for you. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's quite okay, but I recommend to take the individual raw pictures and stabilize them in After Effects. The quality is much better and you can get rid of the shift. In this case, I also applied warp stabilization in Premiere Pro to get it even smoother. So we have our first hyperlapse at daytime. Now we have to come back to the same location at night and shoot the same hyperlapse at nighttime so that we can later lay those two clips on top of each other in post production. First of all, we have to adjust the exposure settings. This could be difficult and I recommend to take a test picture in the normal picture mode so you can see what your final result will look like before starting the hyperlapse. If you have your settings right, go into hyperlapse menu and select the waypoint setting the same way you did for the daytime hyperlapse. And now comes the tricky part. If you press record, the drone starts to fly to the first waypoint. The aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. But only at 1.8 km speed. If your first waypoint is far away, you might run out of battery just by flying to the first waypoint. The best way to overcome this problem is to press the record button to see in which direction the drone is turning itself. Then stop the hyperlapse and fly manually in this direction as close as possible to the waypoint. If you do not remember exactly where the waypoint is, you must guess. Just press the record button again. If the drone continues to fly in this direction, you are not there yet. If the drone turns around, you went too far. Be careful while doing this because the obstacle avoidance may not work in dark conditions. 
The aircraft is heading to the first waypoint. If you press record and the drone reaches the waypoint, it starts the hyperlapse. Keep in mind that the preview might not show what's happening when the camera is set to a long exposure setting. So, this is the 4K video you get from the drone. As you can see, the clip is a bit noisy and drifts to the side, like our daytime hyperlapse. I recommend to develop the raw photos from the drone with Lightroom and LR timelapse to get a better result. But before we edit the hyperlapses from the photo files, let's see what we can do with the processed 4K video files. After testing the 4K video files, I like the reverse version better, so I match the hyperlapse from the photo files and play them in reverse. And this is my final day to night hyperlapse after matching the two shots. After seeing the final result, let me show you how you can match those two clips in Premiere Pro. First of all, create a sequence and put the two clips on top of each other. Then go in the effect controls and set the keyframe at the first frame. Zoom in so that the clip fills the frame and go even a little bit further. Then lower the opacity to around 50%. Now we must match the zoom from the two clips. Go to the project viewer and zoom in to see how far we're off. Change the values from the clip above to match those shots manually. Try to match the frames as close as possible by changing the values on the two axes for up and down and left and right. Then jump to the middle of the clip and see how far off the frames are. The more stable the hyperlapse are, the less tweaking is required. After matching the middle frame, jump to the last frame and match it as well. If the hyperlapses are stable, it might be enough to use free keyframes, which is the case for my manual stabilized clips. If the clips are matched, you can place keyframes on the opacity line from the clip on top to fade it in or out. This way, you get the smooth transition between the two shots. If you want to use the video clips from the drone, more keyframes are required. I would start by applying the warp stabilizer and see how stable you can get the footage. Then start with the first, the middle and the last frame. If the result is not smooth enough, try adding keyframes in between. This process may take a while, but the more keyframes you put in there, the better the result will be. If you add a lot of keyframes, but the transition between the clips is not soft enough, try making the transition shorter. So that's it from me, I hope you liked the video and if you have any questions about this technique, ask me in the comments below and I see you in the next video. Peace.